Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. So we are here with another exciting podcast. And in this episode, we will discuss the barriers to entry in Salesforce ecosystem with none other than doctor turned into a Salesforce professional, Nisar. So let's hear it from Nisar. Okay, so Nisar, can you please introduce yourself to our audience? Hey, hello everyone. My name is Nisar. Uh, I have been in the Salesforce ecosystem for seven years now. I have 25 Salesforce certifications at this point of time. And I have got uh, the Health Cloud Accredited Professional as well as the Public Sector Solutions Accredited Professional as well. Uh, in terms of certification, I'm a five-star ranger. And also, you know, I, I work as a solution architect slash technical architect. I wear multiple hats on different clients. I provide assurance as well as I look into implementations and deliveries as well of projects. And I am the health and life sciences lead for Salesforce in the ANZ region, that is Australia and New Zealand. The fun fact about me uh, is that I'm a qualified doctor as well. I've done my bachelor's in medicine and surgery uh, way back in 2010. And then I transitioned into Salesforce seven years ago. Yep. Oh, that's how I connect the dots. That's the reason I'm the health, health and life sciences lead in, uh, in in Salesforce. Nice. Thanks, Nisar, for lovely introduction. Yeah, nice, Nisar. That was an impressive introduction. So we will start, Nisar, uh, with a few of the questions which we feel like uh, suits your profile and you will be like happy to share it with our uh, community. So as a senior Salesforce architect, what advice would you give to someone just starting their journey in the Salesforce testing domain? Yeah, so firstly, a big hello to all the uh, testing community out there, all you folks, you know, what firstly I would like to give my gratitude and offer my gratitude to each and every one of you, because the testing folk, without the testing folks, we could not have reached where we are. One, as a product, because every product needs testing. And next is the implementation as well. Without testing, we would have never been able to, you know, implement Salesforce the way we always envisioned or the client envisioned. So a big thank you to all of you for being there and helping us in this journey and being a part of it. And that's a good question. Uh, so basically, just to play it back, you just want to understand, you know, if somebody's starting their journey in Salesforce from a testing perspective, what is it that you should be interested in, right? So first is you understand the Salesforce fundamentals. As to what exactly Salesforce is, you know, is it a CRM? Is it an ERP? What is it? Right? It started as a CRM way back, but then it 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 actually came a long way. So understand the fundamentals, understand the object model, the fields, etc., and the phases sort of automations. And it's a it's not a pro code platform. It is more clicks over you know over coding. So that is the fundamentals of Salesforce. Also, you know, you have to learn the best practices when you are testing Salesforce. So the best practices, you know, it could be as good as the naming convention uh, of how you name the objects or how you name the field, or it could be the other way around. It could be the technical aspects of the governance limits. It could be something like data skew. Again, I'm just naming best practices. Like, you know, you can't have more than 10,000 child to a parent relationship, which again, you know, ties back to my first point, which is around, uh, you know, mastering the fundamentals of Salesforce. And there are various testing types in Salesforce, right? Uh, you need to be aware of both the testing types. And I think uh, the test planning is really important as to when you conduct what type of testing, like SIT, UAT, and uh, the business testing and the smoke testing, which happens in the PVT as well. But I think all of you know this, so I won't stress a lot on that point. And the most important point in my diary for testers is master both the Apex testing because Salesforce uses Apex as a coding language. So you need to master that testing and you've got to master the clicks over uh, code as well, testing. And both of them have a different way of, you know, doing doing testing. So those are my key five uh, fundamentals that I would like to share with all of you for beginner, beginner testers. Thanks, Nasar, for in-depth answer. It will surely help the testing community. So let's move on to second question. So Nisar, in your experience, what are some common misconceptions or myths about entering the Salesforce ecosystem, particularly for testers? Yep. So the first is the name Salesforce, right? That is only sales. It's not that. Salesforce has multiple clouds, like health cloud, 
you know, especially as in health cloud, public sector cloud, manufacturing cloud, automation cloud, so sorry, automobile cloud. All of these are different clouds within Salesforce. It's just not sales, right? Like we have an opportunity to convert the opportunity and it's done. It's not only for sales. We do service cloud as well. We have AI as well. We have data cloud as well. So there are multiple aspects of Salesforce, just not limited to just sales part of it. And the other one is uh, Salesforce is for everyone. It's just not for administrators or developers. Salesforce is as much as, you know, as mine, it is yours as well, the testing community. You have a big role to play. There are business analysts who have a big role to play. There are business users who have a big role to play. So that's a common misconception that Salesforce, from a technical perspective, is only for admins or developers. Right? You must have come across that, right? <laughs> When, when uh, people talk about sales for that, or oh, it's only for admins and developers. The next is, uh, you know, people do ask me this question, and it's a myth that testing is the same in Salesforce as it's for other platforms. So the answer is yes and no. It can be same as it is a cloud-based platform, but there are certain nuances, you know, without going into too much details. Uh, it does differ in terms of testing and how you would test. Uh, the sandbox seeding, the different types of data migration testing, and just testing the configuration or just testing the development. They all differ. And for that, Trailhead is your best friend. So that is another myth. And the other one is uh, Salesforce is just manual testing. I don't know how many times I've got to repeat this to people that no, automation testing is a part of Salesforce, right? It's like every time I do a change, a small change, uh, you know, you have to test everything manually just to see that, you know, everything is working fine. Uh, and I've told this to so many clients that no, that's not the case. In fact, the tool that you know you're wearing on your chest right now, Proa, is one of our partners. There we do prefer Proa, uh, and there are other tools as well which we prefer as Salesforce partners to do automation testing as well, and the CI/CD capabilities, etc. And the other misconception is that you know once you get certified in Salesforce, it guarantees an immediate success uh, for people who are trying to get a job in Salesforce or trying to you know move from one profile to another profile. Well, certifications are a good way to look at what your credentials are and what you're capable of, but they are not uh, a silver bullet that will guarantee you immediate success. So these are the myths in, in my opinion, which need to be debunked. Yeah, thanks Nisar for breaking out these common misconceptions and myths in the Salesforce ecosystem that will definitely help community to understand. Now let's move on to the third question. Can you share some challenging experience from your early days in Salesforce uh, and how you basically overcame those uh, challenges? Okay, that's an interesting question because every day was a challenge for me. I don't know which one to recall now. <laughs> but I'll generalize it uh, so that I can take it one level above rather than pinpointing to a particular situation. As you know, I didn't have a IT background. I came from a medical background, out and out medical background. Right. And I did my MBA in healthcare management as well. So I had some business understanding as well. And before I came into IT, that was my profile. Once I came into IT, I started learning trailheads and I started looking at YouTube videos, you know, similar podcasts like you have today. They were like seven years ago. There were seven years ago, there were other podcasts as well, which helped me a lot. I thought that that is the real challenge. Learning Salesforce is the real challenge. And, you know, coming, not coming from an IT background, understanding what is an object. It took me seven days to understand what is an object. It took me another 15 days to understand what is a field, right? And I thought, yes, this is the challenge and I've overcome the challenge. An object is nothing but a table. In the end, after seven days, I learned this. That is the kind of challenge I was facing, but I was wrong. That was not the real challenge. The real challenge started after I got a job in Singapore. Every day was a challenge. Because what you learn in a playground, in a training playground, is quite different. That was not the challenge. That was just the trailer. The real movie, the challenge we started after I got a job because every day was a different day. The business would come with different problems. Different, the business would come with different challenges that they're facing. And they looked at me as an admin. My first job was as an admin slash developer to solve this problem, right? And again, no matter how much you Google, how much you look on YouTube, you will only get to 50 or 60% of the solution. The remaining 40%, you have to carve it out on yourself. And that 40% is the real challenge. Very true. Very true, Nisar. So now that our audience know the basics, uh, so let's move on to next questions. So how important is continuous learning in Salesforce ecosystem and what resources would you recommend for testers to stay updated? Yep, that's a great question again, because Salesforce is known for innovation. I am not ashamed to admit, I don't know 100% of Salesforce. Nobody knows 100% of what Salesforce can do. 
because salesforce innovates every three uh, every every uh, every year it has three releases three. and it innovates exactly. after every release and when i say innovates after every release every cloud sales cloud service cloud health cloud you know all these have their own release notes which earlier in you know 7 years ago used to be like two page or three page now they are run into 20 pages so going through this every four months is just too much for any one person through all the clouds but if you ask me about health cloud yes i go through all the release notes i'm up to date and i'm pretty much you know specific about health and you know what has what it it has as an offering and the basic uh, you know the platform release notes that is what i always study so when it comes to continuous learning my message to the team out there is that don't try to learn too many things all at the same time because it will keep on innovating and what you know today tomorrow might be outdated that happens and if you concentrate on a particular segment that you're interested in please concentrate on those release notes and those innovations that sales force comes up with and there are other ways of you know gaining knowledge i'm not a big person you know i'm i'm not big in terms of going and studying the release notes which is like in a pdf for a word format i love watching uh, you know summaries put up by youtube bloggers as well as you know website bloggers there are some of my favorite bloggers out there like sales force ben is one dinesh yadav is another one you know who come up with the their cool and favorite features after they release it which mean quickly get a summary of other clouds which i'm not studying uh the other thing is uh, best practices and patterns i have already spoken about it so i won't repeat this but uh, it is really important to be across all the best practices and patterns uh, with with updated uh, releases and the release notes and they keep on uh, you know changing because as salesforce is maturing as a platform the best practices tend to change okay what was true as a best practice 7 years ago may not be true today as a best practice you know since certain situation for example coding was the best practice then uh, for a situation which was not solvable using uh, config but today using config you can solve that problem for example epic sharing which is now possible using flows as well so keeping yourself updated uh, on the best practices is also something that you need to look at from a resource perspective the other thing is uh, emerging tools and technologies again there are other tools which are available as an app exchange product on salesforce have a look at it and those are important resources because today what you can build custom tomorrow can be you know bought off from a platform like app exchange where build versus buy you can simply buy and have licenses where there is less upfront costs and you can simply go ahead and you can uh, start using it the same applies for testers as well right because it's not easy to test a managed package which is available on app exchange i'm not sure if i'm making sense i'm using too many technical terms here but just like apple has i iphone store app, i don't use iphone but it has an application app store, store. Yeah. android app store and android has google play store similarly salesforce has app exchange so you have to be aware of the different applications out there especially for testing uh, there are many testing applications out there That's networking and community involvement is uh, is is one thing that you need to use as a resource as well so there are salesforce meetups there are people you know doing uh, meeting up uh, for different events like world tour is one which happens in sydney there are other events which happen across the globe one the biggest one is being the salesforce uh, dreamforce which is a networking event but you can meet people be a part of those sessions out there and use them as resources to invite more knowledge so nisa like i have to say like these were some very right and useful insights which you shared with our audience and be given our little experience in salesforce we have to say like uh, it's very true whatever you shared is very true now let's move on to our final question what are your key takeaways from your journey so far and how can testers leverage these insights for success again that is the question i love the key takeaways so when i entered the it ecosystem right i'm just not talking about salesforce the it the it ecosystem and of course being an architect i have to work with different technologies as well where salesforce is in the body and there are other technologies which can be integrated i always had this misconception i should have brought it up in a misconception question as well it's it was more about uh, it is about coding it is about testing it is about you know delivering a user story what i learned or what the key takeaway is that we are here to solve a problem for business why would business spend money to see you solve a user story no 
you are solving a problem the key takeaway for everybody out there let it be an architect especially the testing community or an admin or a developer is that you are a problem solver you need to understand key takeaway again is you need to understand where you fit in the ecosystem and in the big machinery what cog are you and where do you fit and how do you contribute to the bigger success of of the business challenge of the challenges that the business is facing am i making sense of course have that problem solving ability within you which we all are right don't stop looking at it from a microscopic perspective that i am here only to test this particular story no that's not the case if you work with the team in a collaborative way you understand you're solving a huge problem for business for example you know the patient management system you know booking appointments for them and sending out the right you know information to them on a regular basis reminding them about, about appointments after the appointment a survey is sent to them so they have a good uh, they have a good experience as well as medication management and you know reminders to them imagine if the tester doesn't test this properly right is it because you know the story did not mention some story might be missing these details right some details might be missing as a tester he take away as an architect he take away see the business process is not broken into in and i think testers have always opened my eyes whenever i used to develop in my early days and even today when i architect solutions right testers are the people who who open my eyes and expose me to my blind spots so the key take away is yes a huge applause i started off the you know podcast with saying that gratitude to you exact same reason the key take away is that the testing ecosystem plays a very important part in the salesforce ecosystem and a very important part of the big machinery in solving a complex business problem so thank you thanks nisar thanks again for sharing this lovely information with our audience i'm sure that it will help a lot of people out there so before we end our podcast any last piece of advice ah no not really i think uh, we covered a lot in in the last 15 20 minutes but uh, a big thanks to you know Arun and Jatin for reaching out to me, you know, making this possible, and I could share my message, uh, whatever I wanted from a Salesforce ecosystem perspective. I hope it was valuable, and I could add more value to to your day to day life and to your personal and professional life as well. So, thank you. Ashar Nisar, thank you very much. These were some great insights, and our audience will love it for sure. Thank you very much. Thanks again, Nisar. Thank you.